I'm Coach Ty, and we're talking about creating a culture of safety and success. We're opening up discussion talking about all the things that went wrong at Penn State University with the Jerry Sandusky case, and then how it cascaded over to Syracuse and Coach Fine being terminated, only to have the statute of limitations run so he can't be criminally charged. The AAU, uh, Bobby Dodd, now accused of uh, sexually abusing several kids and being released from his job as executive director of the AAU, where he was made, uh, being paid $270,000 a year. The Citadel, a military institution that paid out $3.25 million in damages, and just recently, the United States Air Force Academy. Where does it end? Well, we're going to talk, and we're fortunate to have on the show today, Officer Kevin Owens, who has worked with the FBI, who has done internet stings, where he has literally been involved in arresting predators that get online going after children. I'd uh, just like to have you introduce yourself, and we're going to open okay. up and talk about some cases. Um, right off the top, I have to indicate that I can't share with the viewers uh, the agency I work for for a number of uh, policy reasons, but I am an active officer, and uh, I did have time through my local agency to work with the FBI. I spent two and a half years working on a uh, federal task force, and uh, the, the part of that that was the most amazing was the, the depth of the involvement of people looking for children and the depravity within that volume. Um, and of course, in my regular everyday uniform life, these cases come up, and we get involved in social networking cases, uh, Facebook and America Online and whatnot, of people acting inappropriately. And as well, people should be cautioned that there are criminal cases that come out of these with people uh, through social networking setting up arrangements to meet and then robberies occur. So um, I've been a policeman for 21 years, uh, local law enforcement, three years with the feds uh, on the internet task force, and I'm happy to be here and to talk these cases with you. Awesome. One of the statistics that comes out is that one out of five children that get online will be inappropriately contacted by someone uh, speaking to them about sex or pornography. Uh, tell us about one of the cases that you worked with in terms of an internet sting and how it was set up and went down. Oh, that is, that is easy to do. It was like shooting fish in a barrel, these cases. Um, and that, that uh, one in five stat, that 20% stat, has been rock solid since uh, probably uh, 2000, 2001. A uh, case that comes to mind right away is uh, just the, the mere fact of me going online to a social network site, um, you know, in, in, the, in the parameters of how the agency task force had to work, you know, by that I mean we, we could not be the aggressors, we could not be um, the ones that act like the curious, interested parties. We were really kind of reduced to a, a presence. And in a chat room, just the mere presence with the profile that I maintained would draw people in. And we also had the ability... What was your profile? Uh, well, I, my profile ran the gamut of male, female, juveniles uh, of, of different... Um, socioeconomic parameters, but really what was the linchpin was that, that my profile was set up to appear as though easy prey, mm -hmm. and by that I mean dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. um, my profile indicated that I came from a broken home, I didn't fit in, uh, kind of a loner type of a profile, and the very nature that I had that made up profile is why we teach kids to have no profile. I'm going to ask you two questions. Surely. First, I want to get to it. I just have to know, Kevin, online, were you blonde? Were you a brunette? Were you, you know, 5'2", you know? How I was uh, a mere 12-year-old <clears throat> boy almost all the time online. Okay. And 12-year-old uh, for a very specific reason, and that had to do with the, um, the state of Ohio criminal code and the, the penal part of the crimes that were committed um, virtually against me. And, uh, and that always, that always uh, well, amounted to a person through the social networking or uh, internet service providers, chat rooms, uh, going through a courtship with me that, uh, that culminated in them meeting the elements of particular crimes to have me meet them out. Mm -hmm. And once all those elements were met, then we had a good charge. We had a prosecutorial overview and review of what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, once green-lighted by them to go ahead and effect the arrest, we would. And that was always, almost always uh, at, a, at a time and location specified by the perpetrator who wanted that meeting to occur. Okay. I'm going to jump in there. You said 12. You were 12. Yes, sir. 
that really is the big ticket age, uh, actually between eight and 12, that children, if they're gonna be sexually abused, are most vulnerable. That's the biggest number, that age group. So, <clears throat> Kevin, with that said, what are the things that you would have to say, so to speak, pre-qualify them so that they could be charged? What would you have to get? Although your <clears throat> terminology of pre-qualified is, is a really great word, and in, in, in the federal task force, the word that we would use would be predicated. But that means is we had to know in our own understanding that the, the individual we were dealing with was already, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for, not predicated, There's a, they, they already have a penchant for this conduct. And, and that has been proven one mm -hmm. way or the other. So it was a rare occasion where we would be online and dealing blindly with an individual. Most of the time, everything that we did was uh, came to us through the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, mm -hmm. a parental complaint, a local law enforcement agency complaint, a state agency complaint, or a federal complaint. Let me ask you this question. I'm um, going to go back to that. But first off, how long would it take for someone to hit on you? Wow, uh, blinding speed. Really? Blinding speed. And the, and the situation was I would be Xing out and closing down a lot of chat boxes because what I was waiting for was the individual who- You would... said blinding speed? Now I wouldn't hit on you. I left my wedding <laughs> ring at home, so you're safe, but- Well, um, I mean, I would have uh, you know twenty or thirty chat boxes open up, all of them saying hi to me. Um, you know, they what was happening was there would be an incoming complaint of a person acting inappropriately toward a child coming into our task force office at the time that I was on it, and I would already have the ISP that the person was using and their screen name. I would already mm -hmm. know that, mm -hmm. and sometimes I would have a copy of a chat. I would know what their what what they were you know, getting at with this child, so some on-the-ball parent mm -hmm. um, was aware or made aware by their child that this was going on, and they printed and copied and made the complaint. So we would get it then into our office through other channels. Mm -hmm. So this was a predicated person. This was a person by name, uh, by, by way of screen name, and, the, and we knew the ISP they were using, that we knew this was their behavior. Internet service provider, ISP, ISP. AOL. That's right. You know, those types of things. That, okay. whole, that whole genre of uh, online services. Okay, let's let's go through it. Okay, you're going to get online. You're so I got believe. this guy's name. Okay. It goes right in my buddy list. Okay. Or any other means from the service provider for me to know that he's out there. So mm -hmm. logged in, got my, logged into my A account with AOL. At the time, too, AOL was a pay for service. So, you know, I had an account. It was uh, a nice, clean, backstopped, uh, no, can't find me kind of a federal account. And bad guy, uh, incoming complaint, bad guy name goes in my buddy list. Mm -hmm. So I know when he's on. Mm -hmm. When he's on, I'm able to go to the room he's in. So I would go there in my A account, not as any of my profiles, and just look. Mm -hmm. Is he there? If he's there, log off the A account and pick from any of my sub-accounts of my, you know, made a profile dysfunctional kids, or maybe I'm a dad with daughters, or maybe I'm a picture collector, uh -huh. and go into that room and just insert myself in the room and do nothing. Uh -huh. And then it happens, just bing, 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 chat window after chat window. And I'm just I'm closing them all as fast as I can because the one I'm waiting for is the individual that we've already got predicated. Uh -huh. And they and, and they eventually hit. What he, so what he's doing is he's reading the profiles too. Uh -huh. And so I just have to wait for his hello, and then it's game on. Here's the thing, what people don't realize, and I've actually gone through some training with the FBI, <clears throat> not to the extent you have by any stretch, <clears throat> but we do know that any time a child gets into a chat room, the capacity of numbers of people that could be in that chat room are anywhere from 40 to 60 people. And many of them engage in what's called a silent interview. They're just sitting back, as you indicated, and they're just watching. They're looking at the traffic flow. They're trying to pick out who's that vulnerable kid, which you had that background on. That's right. And then that's who they go after. And they also sit and they also watch in an open chat room versus an instant messaging where it's private. They're watching the, the language going back and forth. They're watching as a kid giving up any information, personal information, phone number, school, social activity, anything that they could pin on because then you have trace route software then you have Google Earth. So, and, and during my tenure uh, on the Federal Task Force, I had some of the uh, predicated subjects that were subsequently arrested 
go to Google Earth after they arranged the meet location mm -hmm. and tell me where they knew things were. Let's stop there. Google Earth, let's explain what that is. Google Earth is when you go online and you can actually look at a person's house, see the address numbers on their front door, see cars in the driveway. Right? Absolutely. Yep, down a thousand feet or lower. Yes. Very detailed. And in real time? Not so in, re not in real time, but Google Earth does have a street level view. Okay. So you can, you can pan down from overhead, and when you get down low enough, Google Earth kicks into a street level view, so you can spin your head 360 and see it as if you were standing in the middle of the road. Wow. Now you're looking at addresses, uh -huh. uh, characters, uh, you, you know, characteristics of the environment, the house. Mm -hmm. it's, amazing, and it's, it's incredible. Talk to me about one of your most prolific cases that's uh, already been settled, of course. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, and anything I talk about will have been already settled. I think the most prolific was where I was posing, uh, well, well, I had made an arrest. Mm -hmm. And this person uh, decided to share some other information about other activity. And what he shared was information about a person that he knew was dealing within his same sex orientation with prepubescent children. Mm -hmm. And when this information was countered and we knew that he had a criminal history along these lines, he became a predicated person to us. And when the proper, proper amount of information we needed to get going was complete, I was then able to and given permission to get online. And this individual uh, was an airline steward. And this individual had um, a, a negative history where he was a vit prior victim. Um, he was caught up in a, in, in a scandal that had occurred in, in a religious church setting. And he grew up to be a predator. And he grew up to be um, a person that was into really young boys, eight years old thereabouts. So the deal was that when I made contact with him, my profile was that I was also an adult male, uh, same sex orientation, and in the closet. I was not mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And what he would do when we would speak is try to get me to come out and then learn his tricks to be able to be active and not get caught. And he wanted me to roll into a position of being with other prepubescent children. And so our conversation led to him wanting to take a flight up to Cleveland. Hello, I'm Coach Ty. And